Welcome back to Anatomy on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this playlist, we're going to be discussing the anatomy of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So we're going to be covering most of the lab stuff in this playlist. I'll have a separate playlist at some point where we discuss the physiology of the nervous systems. All right. Now in this video, we're going to discuss embryonic brain development. And what we're going to see is that the parts of the brain that you actually study in the lab ultimately develop from what we call brain vesicles. Okay? And there's two kinds. The initial ones are primary brain vesicles, and then we have secondary brain vesicles. And so we're going to look at the development of the major parts of the brain initially from primary brain vesicles, which are shown over here on the far left. Now, this is what is developed in a three to four week embryo. So we're talking about embryonic development here well before birth. And so with these primary brain vesicles, we typically talk about them from anterior to posterior. Okay? The most anterior of these is what's called the prosencephalon. And the prosencephalon will eventually develop into the forebrain. Okay? So that's this. In the middle, which will eventually become the midbrain, this is what's called the mesencephalon. Okay, or mesencephalon, as some people will pronounce this. And the most posterior of these primary brain vesicles is the rhombencephalon, which becomes the hindbrain. Now, these three primary brain vesicles are present in a three to four week embryo. If we fast forward one to two weeks into a five week embryo, what we see is that the prosencephalon and the rhombencephalon specifically have differentiated into two separate brain vesicles each, which will give us a total of five secondary brain vesicles. So first of all, the prosencephalon, which is the forebrain, differentiates into the most anterior telencephalon, and then just posterior to that, the diencephalon. Notice the mesencephalon will grow, but it does not differentiate any further. It's a mesencephalon in the primary brain vesicles. It's also the mesencephalon in the secondary brain vesicles, still right in the middle. And then finally, the rhombencephalon differentiates into the metencephalon here in pink, and then the myelencephalon, which is the most posterior of all of these in the secondary brain vesicles. And so just like you should know anterior to posterior in the primary brain vesicles, you should also know anterior to posterior in the secondary brain vesicles. Now the problem is, is if you have to memorize these from anterior to posterior, a lot of these are kind of a tongue twister, right? But what can help you is that if you notice, each one ends in encephalon, teal encephalon, di encephalon, and so on and so forth. And so if you just remember that they all end in encephalon and memorize the prefixes, teal, di, mes, met, mile, that can also help you. Now, another thing which is not true for the first two, but for all the last three, which all start with an M, the last three, which all start in an M, are technically in alphabetical order. S comes before T, and then Y comes after E. So if you put these in alphabetical order, you have mes encephalon, met encephalon, and then of course last would be myel encephalon. They're not all in alphabetical order, because technically these two, teal encephalon and diencephalon, are out of order. But that can help you with the last three of these. Now, one of the other things that you'll have to do most likely is know the general parts of the mature brain that arise from each of these secondary brain vesicles. And obviously we won't see these in a five-week embryo, but if we allow development by the time the baby is born, we'll see these structures. Okay? So the telencephalon, which is the most anterior of the secondary brain vesicles, develops into the cerebrum, which remember is the outer part of the brain the part that you actually see superficially, which is composed pretty much of all the cell bodies of all the neurons in the brain. So telencephalon becomes the cerebrum. The diencephalon becomes the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. Technically, it would also develop into the eye cup, but generally speaking, we usually consider the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. And really, the epithalamus is the pineal gland, which produces melatonin, okay? The mesencephalon, right in the middle, becomes the midbrain. You could have probably guessed that. And sometimes we'll break the midbrain down a little bit further into the cerebral peduncles and the corpora quadrigemina. Those are the two major parts of the midbrain. 
The cerebral peduncles are the most rostral or anterior part of the midbrain. So if you actually dissected the brain or looked at a model, find the midbrain and the cerebral peduncles are the ridges on the anterior part of the midbrain. Okay. On the posterior part of the midbrain, we have the corpora quadrigemina, which are basically just four circles, I guess you could say, four bumps that are arranged in a square fashion. Okay. You have two top ones and two bottom ones. Now, at this point, you probably wouldn't have to know this, but it's worth mentioning that the corpora quadrigemina is actually composed of two sets of bumps. I mentioned that it's you know, four bumps arranged in a square fashion. The top two bumps are actually what we call the superior colliculi, and the bottom two bumps are actually the inferior colliculi. But collectively, these four colliculi, or two sets of colliculi, are the corpora quadrigemina. So if you ever see in your textbook the superior and inferior colliculi, those combined are the same thing as corpora quadrigemina. Okay? All right, getting back to this, the metencephalon is going to develop into the pons and the cerebellum, both of which are caudal or inferior to the midbrain. Okay? Remember, the pons is just part of the brainstem. The cerebellum is that thing in the back of the brain that regulates uh, posture, reg control of movement, fine tuning of movement, and so on and so forth. And then finally, the myelencephalon develops into the medulla oblongata. One important thing about this is it may be tempting to just call it the medulla. In fact, some people, if they're talking in the context of the brain, will just call it the medulla. But to get full credit on this, generally for any course, you would have to write out the full name because we also have an adrenal medulla which is in the abdominal pelvic cavity above the kidneys. So you need to specify it's the medulla oblongata to get full credit for this. So hopefully this made sense, and now you understand the development of the parts of the brain, that is the major parts, ultimately from the primary brain vesicles and then into the secondary brain vesicles. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.